All right, so welcome back to the mathematics section of the civil FE exam review. In this video, we're gonna be looking at statistics um, and that can include anything from distributions, mean, median, mode, standard deviation, confidence intervals, regression, and curve and fitting. So um, I'm literally just reading this off of what the NCES tells us that could be on our exam. Right, so um, let's go ahead and dive in to this to number one. All right, so number one says, so you want to rent a one bedroom apartment in Dallas, Texas next year. The mean monthly rent for a random sample of 60 apartments advertised on apartments.com is $1,000. Assume a population standard deviation of $200. Uh, construct a 95% confidence interval. All right. So um, let's, let's take a look at what we're given first and foremost. So we are given um, the mean which is $1,000. We're also given the number of apartments, which is 60. Uh, we're given um, the d standard deviation, I'm just gonna put SD, uh, that is $200. And so um, those are all the givens what are we trying to find we're trying to find the 95 percent confidence interval all right okay so what is confidence interval um, so basically a confidence interval is a range. And so that's what we're trying to find that. And we're trying to find uh, or be 95% confident that an apartment within um, this sample is going to range um, pretty much near the $1,000 mark plus or minus uh, 200, right? Or the standard, standard deviation is could be anywhere from, you know, $200 off from that, that mean. So, um, what we want to do is, uh, determine those boundaries, right? And so, um, how do we start this problem, right? So I don't know too much about confidence intervals. So normally when I don't know something, um, I try to, find some formulas that involve it. So I'm just going to do a, con a control search and do confidence interval. All right, one thing comes up. So one thing that you want to note. Okay. So this is the first thing that comes up is a confidence interval for an intercept. So this is kind of confusing, all right? A lot of symbols, all right? Um, and you need to know those symbols. So it'd be nice if they told me what those symbols meant. So we got uh, a, so I start to look at my variables, right? And see what I'm given, the information that I'm given. Um, N is gonna be my number of samples, which is 60. SXX, what's MSE? Uh, sometimes you'll have to scroll up to see 
what some of this stuff even means, right? So based on them not even sharing with me what any of that means. Okay. So I think I'm getting a little bit warmer, right? Uh, this one says, this, I'm gonna type in confidence interval, uh, sample distributions, confidence interval for mean of a normal distribution. So um, I do know that we do, the standard deviation is known. And so um, X bar represents my um, mean. Um, and then Z alpha divided by two, I don't know what that is. This symbol represents the standard deviation. And then N is the number of samples. So basically, it seems like I have a good amount of variables that I can work with, right? And so this is why being able to navigate through this, whoa. It's going to be super important and understanding what is what. Okay. So I don't know what Z alpha divided by two is here. So can I determine that? Well, base, because I know, um, I know I'm, I'm f very familiar with this chart and this manual. So, um, Z alpha corresponds to the appropriate probability under the normal probability curve for given Z, uh, Z variable. So, um, what is Z variable? Well, Z variable is the 95%. So you got an 85, 80% 80 confidence interval. Um, and so we're going to be looking at this. 95% confidence interval. So we need to use uh, Z alpha divided by two is equal to 1.96. That's the value we need for that. So, um, if you didn't know what some of this stuff, these symbols mean, all right, here's a perfect place to go to start seeing some of this stuff. So Z variable is the standard normal Z score. Uh, test statistic, this symbol stands for standard deviation. Uh, your population mean, your hypothesized mean, mean, right? That X bar that we saw, N is the sample size. So, um, once we go back to our our one, then what are our bounds, right? What is what are our bounds? So we have X bar. Which is equal to the main, which is equal to a thousand. We have a uh, standard deviation, which is equal to um, what is our standard deviation? Two hundred. And then uh, for variables, we have our Z A divided by two, that's 1.96. And our N is equal to 60. So now we can find um, the bound, the lower bound of this um, amount of rent or price of rent. So let's uh, solve. So X bar minus Z 
times the mean over the square root of n which equals two. And this is our lower bound. So, so we're saying our mean, which is a thousand. Uh, minus the uh, 1.96 times 200 divided by the square root of 60. And you should get for that 949. Dot Okay, and so that's our lower bound. So we're 95% um, sure that our rent, um, we're 95% confident that our rent will be between $949 and um, our upper bound is going to be here. Since we know our standard deviation um, this is going to be the same thing, but it's going to be plus. So X bar plus Z alpha divided by two times standard deviation over the square root of N. And that's going to equal 1000 plus 1.96 times 200 divided by the square root of 60. And that is going to give us 1050.61. 1050.6, right? So, um, our answer is going to be A, and for saving time purposes, if you get one of the bounds and it matches up, then you don't have to solve for that upper bound because, especially if it's not the same, because if we would have saw that it was 949, right, we could have got rid of uh, B, C, and D from this, so. I hope that you're enjoying this video. I just wanted to drop in and say if you're looking to pass your civil FD exam within the next 90 days, then you definitely want to check out the course that I've created. The video that you're currently watching gives you just a glimpse of what is in the course and I have made it test taker proof. And what that means is, is no matter if you've been out of school for a while or you just have trouble with some of the engineering concepts, if you study this material that is in the course, it will help you to pass within the next 90 days. There are also full practice exams. Yes, 110 question practice exams, along with review guides and study schedule templates to help you pass. And these, re these are resources that I have created for you. So if you wanna check out any of those, just head down in the description box below and check them out now. Now to stay up to date on any new videos that I drop, whether it is more practice problems like in this video, or if you want advice and some extra tips to help you pass your civil FE exam, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so that you know exactly when I post. And if you wanna check out the next video, you can here.